What up, guys? Welcome back, Gambler. We are on the Death Knight, finally. We are on the Death Knight, my level 70 Death Knight. So if you guys are not aware, we're going to start flying around here and start gathering. Um, so when you hit level 80 on your main tune... Wow, that's really nice to start with. Um, actually, let me do this. I'm going to change this. So I'm going to make a... Let's go to... Uh, let's go to... How do we do this? Uh, create new window. Gathering. You guys can see what we just got. So I know I, I have I have two ways to track this. So you can see up here. This is actually only. So I have I have two things. I want I want to be able to. Uh, so let's go to let's go to settings. I. I I apologize here. So let's go to chat. Say. Turn on. We're going to turn off all messaging. And other. So we're going to go to. Item loot. Okay. And then we're going to pull. I'm going to have this like right here. So let's, let's restart this. So I know you guys couldn't see. Okay. We're going to restart this. So we're going to start this again. So this, this is actually tracking our or and eternals, but it did not track. So on that, on that mining node, I just got, I actually got a gem. We can open the bag. Actually I go like this. So let's, let's really organize this real quick. So kind of, kind of scuffed. I apologize, but, um, we're going to go like, so I should have removed all the junk out of like, all, at least all of the, um, mining junk out of my bags, but you know, we're learning. I have it. This is the first, like I said, video with the uh, death Knight. Let's see if any other, so we will keep this bag open. We keep this bag open. Okay. You guys can start to kind of see what we already have in here. So getting back to this Death Knight, obviously a little bit different than the um, than the Druid. Death Knight on, so you guys can see, this is great. So we're going to see what we've gathered here. And then I also have another way to track it right here. This is going to kind of display the value. And this is pulling numbers from uh, Trade Skill Master, another add-on that I have. So we're going to we're gonna have a little bit of time to chat here and uh, try to try to unpack a little bit of the thought process uh, that I go through. Just just talking out loud. You guys hopefully uh, hopefully enjoy this stuff. I talk a lot. I apologize with just trying to relay my thought process on this game. Uh, so things that, like I said, the Death Knight after I get this mine. So there's two things that happen with the death Knight. The problem, the, the, the problems that you occur, especially with obviously being level 70 and uh, trying to fly around in the areas that are, that are bigger than you, but you are a death Knight, So you just smash everything. So you have to fight stuff when, when you loot. And like I said, with the, with the Druid, you don't necessarily have to do that. So that's one of the drawbacks of the death Knight. And, but this right here, so Death Knight gets talents that make, that gets talents that make your, any mounted, uh, activities that you do, you go faster than just like, just like a paladin. So Death Knight paladin get buffs to flying. They're flying mounts. So this is, this is 280% with Epic Flying, but you're going to get 20% more by having on a pale horse. So on a pale horse is talents that you use as a death knight gives you 20% faster mounted speed. So that's huge. That's what makes this so amazing to be a death knight and, and gather in this game. That's probably why you see a lot of death knights. You see a lot of paladins. Obviously you see a lot of druids. That's why the, the server is just flooded with them because they're the best three classes to uh to gather with 
So maybe that's why we see such a such a huge problem, not problem, but just a flood of paladins, druids, and death knights on these servers, at least on Grob. So you can kind of see here um, the strength of the death knight, especially if you're level 80 and you're able to smash things in like three hits, which would actually not slow you down slow you down that much. You obviously don't have a vanish. Well, technically you do. So getting back to one of my other videos that I made, um, I had a pecking order that I had I had shared. So the a night elf death knight, and obviously repositioning your. What will happen is if, if you accidentally aggro something like this guy, you'd have to kind of position yourself over here. Shadow meld. He would drop aggro long enough for you to mount back up the only drawback of the all the classes that are not a druid is you don't have instant flight form so instant flight shadow meld instant flight form is huge um and and i'll get in a later video when i'm when i'm doing dragon blight again on the druid i will share the there's certain spots that you can pretty much only have a druid with shadow meld and instant flight form to get in and out of for mining and herbing like this uh, Galrokren's Rest is one of those areas. Another thing, like I just said, you might have to fight something if um, you're a Death Knight or you engage as level 70 against level 80 and you die like I did right there. So extremely inefficient. Uh, that was a druid, so one of the three uh, classes that are really good at doing this. So, that's where we're doing our little death walk back. Um, I'm showing the death knight just because of just this is this is just m motivation to show. When, if this is your off guy, so like I said, um, this guy's only level 70. So there's going to be drawbacks to doing this. You know, you are flying around faster, like I'm flying around faster than my druid. But the drawback is I got to fight stuff and I can't shuttle meld and I can't instantly get back on my mount. So obviously, and then you fight somebody that's level 80 and you die. So just like in Shalzar Basin, uh, you run into this. You run into these uh, a lot of, like when I'm playing on my Druid, I see a lot of people that are level 70 out there, level 71, level 72. That should not be in those zones just because um, the, 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 the mobs in there are too high. So here's another example of having to fight stuff. At level 70 because you aggro them because you have such an a huge aggro radius because things are higher than you that guy was level 72 i'm level 70 but you still get the mine so but the the thing about so this route that i'm taking right now is one of the four routes that i use for cobalt okay sometimes this is this is it's good out here but the problem with this this route and i'm not bashing the route the route is amazing but you instantly leave Dalaran, and most people, like, yes, like, engineers have wormholes. Um, people set their hearths into other locations where they want to be gathering. But for the most part, a lot of people that, that, that need, want to come out and go do Cobalt instantly head south and head into this area. So this is just another, this is just an overlapping issue that you run into trying to gather in this area just because of the fact that... Um, you are not, you're just going to get a lot of people that are either flying towards Grizzly Hills or um, Howling Fjord, or they're flying towards Borean Tundra from Dalaran. There's just a lot of overlap here, which I'm not bashing the area. This area is amazing, but so, it's just, this is just a hub for, like I said, a lot of overlap with everybody else that's doing the same thing as you, which is gathering. But this area in itself is I found probably like I'm not I'm not I'm not giving away all my tips and all my all my thought processes on everything that I do. But this area 
I just don't think people think Cobalt when they think of Dragon Blight. I think that they they think of like the starting zones of the area, and Dragon Blight is not a starting zone of this expansion. This is like the third or fourth area that you come to when you are uh, leveling or you're thinking of places to quest. Because typically you're like, okay, like this is a new, this is a new expansion. This is a new blah blah blah. Uh, where would I go to get the starting ore or herbs or, and and people just, I think, I think in general, people just get stuck in that mindset. They don't think of efficiency. Not not all people. I mean, some people, not all people. I'm just saying, I think the average person does not get in that stuck in that that same mindset of, okay. Um, I'm thinking the fourth zone in the area is the best place to get the starter um, materials or starty, starter gathering materials from professions. I just don't think people think that way. So we're gonna do we're gonna do my little. Uh, uh, obviously, I'm sharing my route. Uh, this route is what I do for Dragon Blight. Um, and the, uh, this route is more drawn to my druid. Um, you do, so the, the, obviously, you know, reflecting here and talking about the druid for two seconds, engineering is also used in this area. So there's a lot of gas clouds out here as well. So, um, I just have some overlapping, um, an overlapping route with doing both gas clouds and mines at the same time. And like, obviously just passively, these overlapping things happen anyways, but I just do this route just because of, um, with the, especially with the death knight and the druid, um, the, the gas clouds that come out of this area are not as valuable as Shalzar Basin. Shalzar Basin, you get your primal fires from, or eternal fires, excuse me, but, um, this area is still good to pick pick up. I mean, any Eternals that you get uh, are, are going to sell. Um, you know, if airs are going for 15 gold a piece, if fires are going for 25, if water, earth, and shadow are just, have just tanked to the point where, like, it's almost vendor prices, like, it's insane right now. But, I mean, you're still going to make a little bit of, of profit off of um, some of the Eternals, but... I just feel like that that's why this the strength of just mining in general is just like the 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 other three videos that I posted while my druid which is Shalzar uh, is just so strong it's so strong for obviously not only mining but but uh, engineering so I'm just uh, this is me a little bit of let me uh I know I'm kind of all over the place just because I'm trying to be somewhat efficient and kill stuff and engage with level 80s even though i'm level 70 <laughs> should not have done that but you know what whatever um but yeah these are just some of the routes that i take so you just guys have just you guys just saw my uh dragon blight area uh a route that i do um there's obviously you guys can see uh borean tundra is massive and uh the so these are the two starter zones and uh, Howling Fjord are, are just massive for mining. And this is actually what's fascinating. I actually, so I was thinking about this before I started recording. There's just so much more strength in obvious. Okay, so let me, let me take this back. There is, it's very strong to have both gathering professions on a death knight or a paladin. But it's just a full-time job to have to switch between herbs and mining every two seconds. So this this Death Knight does have herbalism as well, and it's leveled up. I have my herb bag. You guys can see it right here. I've done I've done constant uh, herbalism on this guy. You know, just especially out here. So this this area that I'm howling forward is massive for uh, gold clover. You can come out here and get like in an hour, like seven. I mean, if nobody else is out here, seven or eight stacks of gold clover selling for 20, 25 gold a stack. So like the profitability has gone up just because of the fact that ore has gone down so low of actually starting to utilize 
herbalism just for the raw the raw herbs that you get from doing this profession turn around and flipping them like i just frost lotus is just not um the i i just don't know i don't know if the amount the amount of frost lotus that is being pumped into the economy is just not going to outweigh just i mean it might it might during if old is out maybe if toc is out and all everybody's still just non-stop using flasks for rating like having so much content that 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 the that the the amount of flasks flasks being used is going to drive the price up for frost lotus because i remember back in the day frost lotus was one one of the most profitable markets that i that i farmed uh during when wrath of lich king was was uh current content i just remember like they go in with 25 30 gold a piece up to 40 you know just huge huge prof profit from just hitting home runs and getting frost lotus i just feel and also i've done a little bit of like i said did a little bit of um herbalism up in storm peaks i just got flooded i got flooded with frost lotus i got like seven or eight and like 40 like half hour 45 minutes i just think that somehow they've they've made it where the frost lotus just drops too often i think the drop rate is too way too much way too high on the frost lotus it just makes it not um it's 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 just drove the price down just for the fact that how flooded the uh, server is with uh, this item or flasks so look at that one so that was a huge one so you guys can see we actually got our second uh gem so blue gem so this is i mean so you guys can see like we're we're only coming out here for ore but there's this this crazy chance not crazy chance but very i would say rare chance like you're gonna get blue gems but it's always nice to get them like as you're doing this like Getting a getting a, a scarlet ruby for free just for mining cobalt is massive. So uh, we can we can got this open. But right now, so we've already you know sitting here bullshitting and stuff. Um, we're on two stacks. So, so I'm share like I said, I'm sharing my flight paths. So you guys can see on, on on the map. I haven't said this during the video yet. I'm using GatherMate. GatherMate is what puts these uh emblems on your on your map so you can fly around and just follow just cobalt or just gold clover if you're doing just herbalism makes things extremely efficient for you especially when you're just trying to clear areas over and over and over again you can kind of either work clockwise work counterclockwise uh go through certain really dense areas like a really good example of dense areas would be like ice crown ice crown for mining has some really really dense areas for um for uh they have like like 10 12 14 nodes in an area of of ore that can spawn so like you want to hit those areas over and over and over again or like go out of your way to check them Whereas like an area like this where you're just doing, you know, cobalt and it you, you can just kind of, you know, rotate around the map and, and not really overlap yourself until after 5, 10, 15 minutes. Not, not 5, 10, but like 10, 15 minutes and just recycle and go over and over and over and over again if you want to do that. Or you can have more randomness to like you like like my plan is to come out here and clear this area and then go to dragon blight and then go to borean okay you can do that i mean obviously you can do whatever you want or you can just stay in one area like this and just keep and just going like work clockwise go, go on the outside work on the inside go on the outside and just hit this and, and and nail this over and over and over again whatever up to what what whatever my advice um so my advice is to stay in the same area that you want to farm so like day like now, like right now we're going into like, it's almost been three weeks since the expansion came out and I've obviously done cobalt 
over and over and over and over and over and over again. Okay. I've done Sarah Knight for probably, I don't know. I've probably gathered like 400, 500, 600 stacks of Sarah Knight. Prospected a tiny bit of it, sold most of it, gather or, or leveled up my three um, professions, blacksmithing, engineering, and jewel crafting all the way up to at least like the only one that I had that have this really low is blacksmithing at 426 but or it might be at 430 now because i made some gear for somebody but dual crafting is, is way high now and my engineering is capped so i've used a little bit of my but and then turned around and sold so much of it so much of it for profit so like this these videos that i'm trying to uh share my thoughts and some of my routes and just some of my um, thought process is going to using death knights in certain situations and using a druid in certain situations. It's just, you know, um, I don't know. I thought these would be like, these would be helpful for, uh, some of you that are like, wow, like what, how is it that you made 40,000 gold in like three weeks? Well, the main thing that I was doing is mining. Like the, one of the only things I was doing is mining legit selling cobalt or for a hundred gold a stack on day three. And now it's down to about like 25, 28 gold a stack. Sarah and I was selling for a hundred gold a stack on day three. And now it's down to like 24 gold a stack. So, um, but these, like I said, just because the ore has dropped, doesn't mean it doesn't have value. It still has value. When prices drop, it just allows for other things to become more valuable meaning like turning around and using ore for prospecting and selling gems or turning around and using ore for gear so selling tech using your kite like like if you have mining you have your smelting you can make you can you have your titan steel cooldown every 20 hours you can turn around and 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 like i have so i have two I, my like i said my druid and my death knight I, I I thought that I would get rid of mining on my druid just because I thought, you know, I'm going to go alchemy, you know, um, flask is going to be super profitable. I just, I've changed my opinion on that. I'm keeping my mining on both my tunes because my titans steal cooldown. I can go out and gather... Uh, give me one sec. So I got to move this. Um, I can go out and gather. I don't have a Almost died right there. Um, I can go out and mine on both these characters and use my Titan Steel um, cooldown every 20 hours. So I got two Titan Steel every 20 hours. I turn around and like I said, I made all of my... So I made all of my own Titan Steel for my motorcycle. I used all of my own Titan Steel four i made a uh, a destroyer and i sold it for like four thousand gold i am sitting right now i'm sitting on uh six right now and i know like like old world hat doesn't come out anytime soon so the motivation for me to actually go in and level up blacksmithing now i need to finish blacksmithing um just because of having two titan steel cooldowns and then i can turn around and, and mate and in so like think of it this way every four days i can make a just titan steel destroyer i've got two guys making two titan steel a day so in four days that's eight eight titan steel makes a destroyer and i can sell those destroyers for uh 2024 that's how much those are going for now uh 2000 gold so every every four days just from my titan steel i can make 2000 gold like maybe more maybe less i mean it just depends on what the market does um these are just things you need to think about. These are things that you need to think about when, when um, you get into creating a lot of gold. I'm like you can see my, my at the top of my screen my Titan my uh, my uh, Titan panel. I'm only at uh, twenty. Excuse me, uh, thirteen hundred gold right now, and the reason for that is because I just got done finishing making my. I'm gonna die right here. I think we'll see. 
Okay, I haven't played this guy in forever. I might not die right here. We'll see. You guys can see me just plowing and doing a ton of damage, even though I shouldn't be at, at level 70 on my death knight. But, um, man, not even close. Um, but when you start getting into making a lot of gold, I'm talking about 30,000, 40,000, 50,000 gold in a couple of weeks. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. I understand that the, the markets aren't catering to that right now. Like when the, when the, the expansion started, like I said, ores were going for an extreme amount of gold, which means you can make it a lot of gold. If you were doing those one or two things like at all times. Okay. The first, the first five days, six days of the server paid for both, pretty much both of my mounts. My, my chopper and my, my mammoth were paid for in like a week just from mining. Okay. So, um, but I, I, I'm going to share, I'm going to, I'm going to finish my route and I'll wrap the video up. I know that was a lot to unpack there and in a, a lot of thoughts, but I wanted to just, so right now. We've been going for 24 minutes and we've gotten, uh, let's see, let's open up the bags. You guys can kind of see. I'm trying to get a little bit of cobalt. Like this probably might, might be a hundred gold uh, that we just made in 24 minutes. Just flying around with the uh, Eternals and the ore. That's not bad. It was a lot more. This was like 400 gold um, a few weeks ago. But that's okay. We guys can kind of see working clockwise, going through the middle. Um, and then now, like, I'm back on my on my route. So I'm going to go over here real quick and we'll wrap the video up. So we started over here. So if this is, this is, so look at this. It's already respawned. So these were, these were, these were down when we first flew over here. This is a really good indication of being able to stay in an area because your mines are already respawning to the route that you've already done, like, 15 minutes ago or 18 minutes ago. So we can come down here and actually check this. I don't think I checked this edge. I think I flew this way, but maybe I, maybe this will be up over here. But again, if every single node, this is my last, my last real part of this rant is you need to check every single node. If you have these add-ons and you are not checking one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, 10, 15 locations, those 8, 10, 15 locations might be the ones that are up, okay? You guys need to, if you're going to get sweaty with this, if you enjoy gathering, give yourself a fighting chance to make a lot of gold in clear, completely clear areas, okay? I understand that my gather mate is not completely filled out i know there's there might be mines over here there might be mines. i don't know if there's mines on the islands at some point if you so like me i look over here i have my second monitor for obs okay i could easily have a map of this area with every single node up and just make sure that i'm clearing all of these areas, like making sure i'm clearing all these nodes making sure i'm clearing all the nodes on the edge and then work my way on the on the uh, middle this is how you control zones this is how you push your competition out of these zones and this is the strength of clearing a zone is the fact that you like i said you're flying around 15 to 18 minutes you are re-picking back up on the things the the nodes that are respawning right behind yourself. If this area was completely bare, like right now, like if on the last 10, 15 minutes of this video, if I was getting no mines, or there's no nodes up, I would be like, holy crap, this, is, this area is just, for whatever reason, there's like five people out here mining. It's not profitable at all. I would go somewhere else. I'd go try. I haven't done much Grizzly Hills, okay? So if you guys look at this, my, my map is barely filled out, okay? But there are other zones. Borean, so Borean is probably, I would say Borean. You guys want to stay away from Borean if you can help it for mining cobalt. Even now, even at 25, 28 gold a stack, 
Borean is like literally a giant. It's just you. You can really make it just one route. It's just like Shalzar Basin for Serenite. Borean is just not good because of just how easy it is. Like it's literally like a loop. Most of the nodes are on this weird loop. Oh, there's a guy mining right. Level 72, and we'll see if he's on a... He's not. He's on a ground mount, so that's fine. Like I said, always check what your competition is doing. If somebody's on a node and their alliance, see if they're on an epic flyer, but that guy's on a ground mount, so this is just completely fine. He just, ha he just happened to be in the area, and now we've got this one. So we're, we're good out here. But I know that's... Uh, once again, I'm going to wrap this video up now. Hopefully, you guys have been enjoying this. I'm going to be making more of these... We just did my Dragon Blight route. We did my uh, Howling Fjord route. Some of the add-ons that I use. And my final points of this video. Completely clear areas. If you are going to stick in the same area over and over and over and over and over again, clear it. Find all the nodes. If you have a second monitor, have a picture of the area to fill out your add-ons and just clear them and get a good routine for that area. Till next time, guys, this is Gambler. Hopefully this has been fun for you. Listen to my voice for a half hour. Till next time, guys, later. Peace.